Hello there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Hannah. I post all things fashion, beauty, and lifestyle related that are also vegan and cruelty free. And today I wanted to share with you my civil ceremony, wedding, hair and makeup that I did myself. So if you haven't seen any of my other videos and you're new here, we were originally supposed to get married in Mexico in November of 2020 and we had to postpone to a year. So now we are going to be having that full wedding in a couple months. I'm so excited about it, but we really just had this feeling that we were supposed to get married in 2020. So we said, you know what, let's just go to the courthouse, just the two of us and get it done legally. I mean, 2020 was such a crazy year and we really wanted to have something positive come out of it and that just felt like the right thing to do. We've also been together for, at that point, we had been together for 12 years. Now we've been together for 13 years. So at that point we were just like, what, why should we wait another year? Like, let's just get it done legally and we'll do the big party with everybody when we finally can. By November of last year, we didn't really know if we were gonna even be able to make our new date in 2021. It wasn't looking great. We didn't wanna wait, you know, until 2022 and then, have to worry about that. So we just got it done legally and we have no regrets. Honestly, had we not already had our venue, I think we probably would have just done the courthouse wedding and been happy with that. Obviously, we're really looking forward to having all of our friends and family celebrate with us. So we're very, very grateful to be able to do that still. But eloping was so much fun. Highly, highly recommend if you are considering it. It was really special. It was just the two of us and about our love and we did it in secret. We only told our family members and we did it on Zoom. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, I will insert some pictures of the day. I'm definitely gonna do a full blog post explaining everything as well for those of you who might be interested in doing a courthouse wedding. We did it at Santa Barbara, the Santa Barbara Courthouse, which is one of the most beautiful courthouses I've ever seen in my entire life. And Santa Barbara is a really special city to us. We've celebrated almost all of our anniversaries there, so. It just only felt right to do it at the Santa Barbara Courthouse. I had considered during that time maybe seeing if I could get a makeup artist to do my makeup just so I didn't have to stress about it. And I definitely see the benefit of having a makeup artist. I think I will do that for our big wedding because um, when you're like nervous and stressed, I feel like makeup is the last thing you wanna do. But I did have the full day to kind of just take my time and I didn't have to worry about anything. So it wasn't that bad. And I actually really like the look that I ended up with. And I feel like it will be helpful for those of you who also want to do your own makeup. It's a great way to save money. And you can also practice on your own face. So that's really nice. You can know what it's gonna look like on the day because you can practice it multiple times. So this is all vegan and all cruelty free products. Of course, as always, as is everything on my channels. And I am also going to show you how I did my hair. Um, I did a specific method that I feel like makes the curls last a really long time. And I was really happy with how it turned out. We got married on a day where it rained in the morning and then it was windy kind of throughout the day as we were taking photos and stuff. So my hair maintained its curl actually really well considering the weather conditions. All right, enough of me blabbering, let's get into the makeup. Okay, so we are gonna start with the bangs. Um, this, if you have bangs like mine, you want to sit for as long as possible. So this, I'm like fully cousin it talking to you right now. Um, if you have bangs like mine, you wanna, want them to sit for as long as possible. So we're gonna start by sectioning them off. I have a Instagram reel tutorial on this as well, but we'll just do the quick version. So how I like to do it is I like to split it in half this way. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think that I just have very thick bangs, so this way they all get proper attention. And then while it's still hot. <laughs> So when I woke up in the morning, the first thing I did was my skincare. I knew I needed that to sit for a while before I put any makeup on because if you don't let your skincare sit for a while, your makeup can sit on it funny. And I definitely did not want that on this day. And then I did my bangs because I knew I needed those to sit for a really, really long time as well in order for them to stay in pictures. So then 
section it out. Typically, when I'm curling my hair, I get very lazy and I just do as big of chunks as possible, but you really wanna take your time with this and be very tedious and use small sections of hair because that is how it's going to stay as long as possible. So I've already sprayed a heat protectant in my hair and now I'm gonna go in and just curl away from the face. So this method of curling, I've done a video on, I believe. I used to be very particular about my waves. Now I don't care as much, but I used to care a lot. And for this day, I definitely cared. So you're gonna curl it, hold it in your hand, do not let it drop, clip it, and let it cool. Do not touch it until it's cooled. This is how it stays forever. So it definitely takes a lot longer to do. The result is so pretty. Clip it in place. Honestly, any kind of clip like this will do. This is just what I have. And make sure you're leaving out, you know, an inch or two of hair at the ends so that it doesn't look like Goldilocks going to prom kind of thing. Again, on the other side of the face, you're gonna curl away from the face. Anytime you're curling, it's away from the face. And for this look, you're not gonna alternate switching directions. You're just gonna always do away from the face. So ideally, you would let this sit for as long as possible. So what I did on that day was I would do a layer of hair. I would go eat a few bites of breakfast, get my stuff together, love on the dogs, do things like that until it was completely, completely cooled. And the longer you leave it in, the longer your curls are gonna stay. You could technically curl your whole head and have them all be in clips. I just didn't have enough clips for how much hair I had, so I worked in layers. I still don't have enough clips, so that's why I'm working in layers again. So once it's cooled, you're gonna take the curl out and it's gonna look wild. Don't be shocked them out one by one don't run your fingers through them or anything I try to like match up the waves with each other do you see what I mean and you can even clip something to kind of hold them in place like that very old Hollywood style curls all right we'll take up this side and clipping in place. Now you don't wanna brush your fingers through them, you don't wanna hairspray them, you don't wanna do anything except just like clip them in place like that. And then you're gonna work on the next layer of hair. Also, if you have naturally wavy hair like me, you're gonna to wanna to shower the night before and blow dry it straight and flat iron it if you need to so that when you wake up, your hair is mostly straight. I mean, I'm speaking for my own hair. I know some people's hair doesn't look like that, but mine does. Okay, so now we have the whole head done. I'm gonna bring it down again. So I'm gonna push this back and we're just gonna go ahead and get right on into the makeup while all of this stays put. So I'm gonna start out with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I love this primer so much, especially for days like this day where I needed my makeup to stay put no matter what. And I am going to do soap brows off camera, but I do have a video on that if you are not sure how I do that. I will link that somewhere up here and you can go watch that. Okay, so brows are done. Now I'm gonna move on to foundation. So the actual foundation I wore on this day was Oma Beauty, but I'm out of that foundation today, so I figured I would try this one by Jouer. It's the Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation. I haven't tried this one yet, but it's matte, it's oil-free, it has hyaluronic acid. It sounds very similar to the Oma Beauty Foundation and all of the things that I liked about it, so let's give it a shot. Could be good, could be bad, but just for your reference, that Oma Beauty Foundation is so great. I love that one. I've mentioned it in multiple videos, but yeah, that one's a great one to wear. So I'm gonna put some pumps on a brush and buff this in. All right, this is definitely very full coverage and this is a little too dark for me. Um, this is in the shade Almond. It looks a lot lighter in the bottle, but it's definitely oxidizing a bit. Just an FYI. I also ideally would have a self tan right now, but I don't, so. We're gonna bring it on down to the neck and make do. So now I'm gonna contour with this Jouer Essential Concealer and Coffee. 
And I'm gonna do under my jaw. I'm gonna do a little bit on my nose and on my forehead. And then I'm just gonna buff that out. So this foundation is definitely very matte. I like the Oma one. It's a little bit more dewy than this, but this is definitely gonna give you that like poreless look for sure. Okay, so I still wanna add some more dimension to my face. So I'm gonna go in with the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer and this is in Fair Warm. It's pretty fair, so I think that will help bring some depth to the face and get this color to look a little bit better. So I'm doing middle of the nose, under the cheeks, under the eyes. And I like to use a beauty blender for concealer. Then I'm gonna go in with this Hourglass Veil Eyeshadow Primer and paint that onto the eyelids. I actually, now that I'm thinking of this, I did my eyeshadow first. And I do recommend that in case you have any fallout since we are gonna be using some darker shadows. So yeah. Okay, so now that I have that on, I'm gonna set everything with the Veil Translucent Setting Powder from Hourglass including the eyelids. The trick with powder is to always start with less and you can always build up more, but it's really hard to take powder away. So I always go in pretty light-handed and then add more to the spots that I feel like I need it. So I really don't need a ton with this foundation. It's so matte already, I don't wanna overdo it. So we're gonna move on now to blush. I'm gonna add a lip plumper to my lips while I work on everything so that it just brings the blood to the surface. This is from Pop Beauty. Um, I really also love the Too Faced Lip Injection. Mm, so good. But this was what was handy. So we're gonna put that on and just kinda like let it sit there. We're gonna move on to bronzer and I'm gonna use the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil. This is just my favorite bronzer because it's not too orange, it's not too cool tone, it's just really, really perfect. And I'm just gonna add that to my cheekbones. Same places that we contoured pretty much. You see how that gives such a pretty definition and it doesn't look orange. All right, and then for blush, this is from Lawless. This is called Desert Rose, and it's it looks pink on camera, but it's a lot more dusty in real life. I think it's just that perfect pink that looks good on everybody. So I'm just applying that to the top, very, very top of my cheekbone and my temples and kind of blending it out there. I'm doing the same on the other side. There's tons of videos on blush placement, but you know, where you place it on your face gives you a different look. Putting it higher up here gives you a more lifted and I think elegant look. Um, whereas putting it on your cheeks is a little more youthful. I really like both looks to be honest. I don't have like a, a favorite per se, but I would say that for, you know, when I'm trying to look my age or older, I like to put it up a little higher like this. For highlighter, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow, the highlighter in this palette. It is just a really pretty natural highlight. It's not too overdone. It's not glittery. It's not too gold. It's not too pink. It's not too white. It's just really just the perfect highlight for me. So yeah, if you have lighter skin tones, I think that this is a good highlighter for you. Okay, definitely put some on my nose as well. Tiny bit on the chin just to add some shine, but not too much shine because you don't want to look greasy in photos. You want to look glowy, but not greasy. Now I'm going to add the Bare Minerals Strength and Length Brow Gel to my eyebrows. This is in Chestnut. And I'm pretty sure I used coffee on our ceremony day because my hair was darker then. So my eyebrows looked better when they were a little bit darker. I'm going to let that dry and I'll go back to those. Now we're going to move on to the eyes. So this is the Pixie Hazelnut Haze Eye Effects Palette. And I'm gonna use this neutral color right here. It's literally called neutral. And with a flat brush, I'm just gonna pack that on the entire lid into the inner corner as well. And you can go all the way up to the brow bone or you can stop at the crease. 
I like to go up to the brow bone because I like to accentuate that and that is your base. Then I'm gonna take a fluffy blending brush and take this color right here, it's called Cream. It's a really pretty transition color, very, very neutral and just buff that into the entire crease and take it out to the corner a tiny, tiny bit. It's really subtle but it really adds a nice diffusion for the darker shades that we're gonna use. And honestly, this eyeshadow look is so easy and it's something that anybody could do. Like, you could do this every day and it would be pretty. That is there, and then I'm gonna go in with the e.l.f. palette. This is the Rose Gold Eyeshadow Palette in Sunset. I'm gonna take the second to last shade right here. It's a really pretty, like, pinkish brown color. I'm gonna take a smaller blending brush, get a little bit of that on the brush and I'm just gonna focus right in the center of the crease. I'm not gonna go too far outside of it and I'm not gonna go too far to the outside of my eye either. Just swirl it around, blend it around in the crease, bring it down to the corner, add a little bit more product. You can always add more product but you can't take away so just start light especially with darker colors like this. I do like this e.l.f. Um, palette, it's just, it's not incredibly pigmented compared to some other eyeshadows that I really like so it does take a little bit more product but I think that kind of helps me control the process a little bit better you basically just want to go just under where you put the transition shade and don't go too far into the center um, but also you know definitely blend that out so it looks nice so there we have it now I'm going to go in with this darker shade right here on the very end. It's a very, very dark brown. I'm just going to take the same brush, but I'm just going to be very, very careful and only pack that on the outer corner. A little bit down on the lid. So see how that's added some more like smokiness and depth to the look. Okay, sorry for the lighting change. We had a technical difficulty. Um, I've taken my hair down and I am just going to pin the bangs in place so that they are out of the way for this part. All right, and then you're gonna go back and take that fluffiest brush that you started with. Don't add any product to it. Buff everything out, blend it all together, and then go back to that other brush, grab this middle shade this is second to last shade right here it's a little bit lighter of a brown and you're gonna kind of put that in the center of the c and just darken the lid only on that one side now you could either add some more of that original shade that we used all over the lid this neutral color right here, or you can add a shimmer. I personally prefer the look of a shimmer, so I'm going to add this first color right here. It's a very light gold color, and I'm actually just gonna take my ring finger and pack that into the center. I just find that sometimes fingers work better when it comes to shimmers. I really feel like I have better control over it, and I feel like you get more payoff when you use your finger as well. So pack that in only on the inner corner to about the middle of your eye, like that. And then you're gonna wanna take a pencil brush, this one right here. I'm gonna go back with this kind of medium chocolate brown color, add it to the pencil brush and just smoke out the lower lash line and connect it to the upper eyeshadow and this just it keeps things looking light and fresh but it also I think adds a really pretty smoky effect when you add mascara to the bottom lash line but it's not too harsh because it's brown now for eyeliner I'm gonna use the balm Schwing eyeliner this is my favorite liquid eyeliner and I'm just gonna add a tiny wing to the outer corner of each eye I just like the look with false lashes when there's like a tiny bit of a black wing, but nothing too crazy. I'm not going to fully line the upper lid or anything, just do the corners. Like that, I just like kind of take the eyeliner into a, a little less than halfway through my eye so that 
it kind of like connects nicely and do the same thing on the other side. While I wait for that to dry, I'm gonna move on to lips. So I've wiped off the plumping gloss and now I'm gonna add lip liner. This is by Model Co. It's the Illusion Lip Liner. And I'm just going to line the lips and I'm going to overline the Cupid's bow a little bit. I like to emphasize that. I think it gives it a really nice romantic look. I know it's very trendy right now to like get rid of the Cupid's bow, but I think for the purposes of a wedding, I think it's just, I don't know, it's like flirty and fun to emphasize it. So what I do is I just start with the Cupid's bow and I overline it the tiniest, tiniest bit. But I really focus on the shape of the Cupid's bow and defining that. And you can obviously make them more rounded or pointy. I like rounded. And then what you're gonna wanna do is just make sure that it connects. So you may have to overline your lips a tiny, tiny bit, but make sure by the time you get to the corner of your mouth, it's not overlined at all, if that makes sense. And then I'm gonna overline a tiny bit in the center on the bottom, just so it looks even. It doesn't look like I have a huge top lip. I'm gonna fill in the lips with the lip liner just for added color in case the lipstick comes off, which it shouldn't. And then the lipstick I wore, this is the CoverGirl Outlast Ultimat 24 Hour Stay Lipstick in Prosecco Pop. And I think it's just this really pretty kind of um, like dusty mauve color that I think pairs really well with the eye look along with like, you know, the more dusty blush and it stayed all day and it's kiss proof too. So perfect for all those photos. I do have a video reviewing this product if you want to check it out. So now we're going to move on to lashes. I am just going to curl the lashes because I am going to do false lashes and I just want to make sure they blend really nicely. So for the actual day, I did magnetic lashes. I believe Ardell makes them, I could be wrong. Um, and I did the half strip and they were so easy to apply. I was so excited about that. And then right before we said our vows, I cried <laughs> like immediately. I should have known myself better than that. But anyways, it rubbed off some of the magnetic eyeliner. Therefore, the corners of the eyelashes weren't sticking. You can't tell in photos, so it's really not a big deal, but it was kind of like in the back of my mind at some points that I wish I would have just done regular lashes and not tried to cheat the system, so to speak. For this, I'm gonna show you what I usually do when it comes to false lashes. And I use the Ardell Demi Wispies and I cut them in half. And I use the inner corner because I like how it's shorter on the inside and longer on the outside. And then I like to just like kind of finagle them so that they're a little more curved and easier to put on the eye. This is the Duo Lash Glue. Just add a little bit on to the lash. Yeah, so I'm just, I put the glue on, I'm just curving the lash to make it fit on my eye a little bit better and then I'm going to plop it on to the eyelid. And just squeeze it to the lash line. Be careful when you're doing this, don't pinch yourself. And that is the look. I think it's really pretty. It definitely makes your eyes look more open. Oh, hi! Hi. What do you think? Do you like the lashes? I think it just makes your eyes pop a little bit more. I think it looks really nice in photos, but it's not too overdone. Um, like I wear these lashes to like brunch, so it's really um, very natural still, but I just think it adds something extra that the look definitely needs. There we have it. So I'm gonna let those sit for a second before I add mascara. So ideally for mascara, you would do a waterproof mascara, um, especially if you cry. <laughs> but today I'm gonna do the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Mascara in pitch black. This one I find really doesn't run that much on me, like even when I cry. 
So um, this one's like a pretty good one, I would say, all around, and I really personally like it. But you know, use whatever mascara you like, honestly. Use whichever one you've cried in before. <laughs> All right, and there we have it. So now we can take the bangs down and spray them with some hairspray. This is the Garnier Fertis Full Control Hairspray, 24 hour hold. This is my favorite hairspray. I'm so happy Garnier is cruelty free now. Just spray the bangs. On days like this, when you need something to like really hold, I find that the classic aerosol drugstore <laughs> Hairsprays just work so good. I don't know if that's just me. Let me know if you're the same. Basically, once you're done with your hair, um, I did this off camera already because of my malfunction, but you just wanna brush through and keep it kind of conjoined the way it is, spray it lightly, and then if you want added volume, I mean, the method that I use actually just naturally gives it volume, but if you wanna add more, this spray from r Co., the balloon spray, is really great. And you can just, see now I can't even separate my hair. Just add it to the roots. And it really gives you a lot of volume. There you have it. This is my civil ceremony, courthouse wedding, makeup and hair, completely recreated for this video. If you did find it helpful, it would mean a lot if you gave this video a thumbs up and commented down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe before you leave for more videos like this. I will have a few more wedding related videos in the future since we are still having our big wedding in a couple months, so that's really exciting. And I will see you all in another video very soon. Bye.